All right, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G, at Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speed, and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Special guest, Westside Barbell legend, Tony Ramos, a.k.a. TFR, Tony fucking Ramos, yeah. one of my homies. What's good? What's up, brother? Man, Glad it's hard to, to get this, it's hard to get this guy on interviews. Yeah. He said I'm on a small list of people that he made time for. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. You fucking guys act like I'm Kevin Hart. And <laughs> you nothing to do with that. No, I'm just business. I'm just business. fucking with you, Tony. I'm like, now I feel bad. I'm like, no. damn, I said, I said some arrogant shit. <laughs> Dude, get the fuck out of here. No, that makes me feel important. <laughs> it's good. So, yeah. Tony, we just had Luke Edwards on. People were fucking love. They love the fucking West Side stories. But what I want to start, where I want to start at is when, how did you either start lifting weights and then into getting to West Side? So what's the pre-West Side, Tony? And then we'll get to what happened when you got to West Side. Like, A lot of people are going to hate me for this, but I, I never fucking lifted weights. At all? I mean, I, in high school, they would like, you know, we'd play football. Yeah. And, you know, they'd have, like, you know, they'd come in and you'd have to take a weight. Everybody had to show up to the gym that day or you wouldn't be able to suit up. What sports you play? Football okay. and wrestled. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, Columbus. Okay. From what, what side of Columbus? North side. Got it. Graduated from DeSales. I ended up going to DeSales. I didn't realize you were a DeSales guy. Yeah, I ended up graduating from DeSales. So, but, so I, and I. I went to five Columbus public schools. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> now that sounds about right. Yeah. So I got kicked out of every Columbus public school there was. We they, knew there was something yeah, else yeah, there, yeah. right? So, <laughs> they, so they sent my dad a letter, and they were like, your son can no longer go to Columbus public schools. And my mom ended up begging him at DeSales to let me go there. Isn't DeSales a Catholic school? Yeah. Yeah. And what I, were you I mean, doing? Like, like, why'd you get kicked out? Oh, I used to fight at the drop of a dime. Like it was, <laughs> like a, literally, I went to Mifflin High School. So I got kicked out of, I, I got kicked out of Brookhaven, went to Northland. I was there for a couple years. I wrestled there under uh, Chuck Dale, which was a great guy. And then I quit wrestling and I got kicked out. And then I went to Mifflin. I was in the office and some kid I knew from middle school was there. And before I even got enrolled, I got in a fight. <laughs> Ended up at Lyndon McKinley for a few weeks. Got kicked out of there, but anyway. Now I know where some of your street cred is that started out at. Yeah, <laughs> this, this, this <laughs> that's, that's why I know everybody. Yeah, but um, no, I when I played football, I kind of um, you know they told you, hey, you got to show up, you got to do this, you got to do that, and I I kind of never, I would never train. I just didn't give care, and I was really fast. I, I could always, I mean, I could jump like crazy. Um, real explosive. So they would tell you, hey, you got to show up to squat. I weighed 140 pounds, and I'd go in and squat 405. <laughs> and I never worked out. And so here's what's crazy. Is, the guy sitting to your left does a lot of that stuff, too. He <laughs> weighs to 148 pounds. Like, I'll oh, just do the meat. I may be around That's 500. What you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just show up. Right? Yeah, exactly. Up. So I basically what happened was is um, I, I didn't really lift weights. And then I got in, when I got into my 20s, my uncle from Puerto Rico, um, he's a great dude, man. He was a, he was a POW mm -hmm. in Vietnam and he was like a real deal badass, but he got into weightlifting and stuff and he would come over in the summer times and stay with my dad and they would work together because my dad owned a construction company or whatever. So I'd go to the gym with him. So my first introduction really to weightlifting was at uh, world's gym. In Worthington, and I was. Mm, there's some dogs there. I was boy. probably like 19 to 20 years, or maybe. I might have been younger, but I can't really remember. But I just remember being in the gym, and I'm like 150 pounds, maybe. And I was walking around with him, and guys are lifting. I don't know what any of the shit, you know, really <laughs> yeah. how to train or do anything. So these guys are deadlifting, and I'm like walking around I'm like okay and this and that and so these guys are deadlifting and they're making it look easy and i'm like oh shit and i was I, i'm stupid i'm like this dumb ass dude that doesn't know anything and it was 4.95 on the bar and i was like hey man i was like can i try that <laughs> and the fucking dudes laughed at me and they were like, they were like uh 
Yeah, fucking go ahead, man. <laughs> you want a belt? And I was like, no, nah, I don't think I need a belt. <laughs> <laughs> so I fucking bend over and I fuck. I mean, it was ugly, but I was like, <laughs> yeah. And I pulled 495. And then dudes were like, what the fuck? And then they thought it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> like you were sandbagging them. Yeah, like, it was like they thought somebody sent me over to him. And then I started talking to him and I met some guys through that. And I kind of just got into training and stuff like that. And I'm, I, I was a couple always, guys said, hey, "This guy's got some talent. There's some, there's some yeah, things yeah. here." Yeah. So I mean, I kind of just started training with people, and then I ended up with Arnold Coleman and Jerry Obradovich. Arnold Coleman had one of the best totals of all time. Yes. That one, that Arnold Classic. Yes. <laughs> so he, uh, so I started training with those guys, and I trained with them for like I don't know two or three years. But to see, they were doing powerlifting meets. So I went and helped Arnold in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Then I helped Jerry in Atlanta. Um, and I never put on shirts or anything like that. These were two of Louie's, like, main guys at that time, too. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, but see, Jerry had got kicked out of Westside. So we were <laughs> play, we were actually training at the Sports Connection. Okay. And um, and that's when Louie and, and uh, Jerry didn't had a problem. So, and, I mean, I talked about this earlier on yeah. another thing. But so we go to Atlanta. Arnold's training Jerry. Uh we go to Atlanta. Me and Jerry ended up in Atlanta for, I think, two weeks before the meet. Uh, and it was Tommy Fan and Tommy Williams. I don't know what name he goes by now. And and, and I, I think somebody said he had passed. So, I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. But so we went down there. We stayed with him. And it was the whole time, you know, fuck West Side. West Side's horrible. Yeah, fucking, yeah. You know, and I didn't know anything really about West Side. Didn't even really care. So we go to the meet. I sat down. I sat two seats down from Louie. And he goes, hey, how you doing? So I'm doing good, man. How are you? They're opening squats. Jerry gets up. He fucking squats. And, dude, he comes out of that squat rack. Fuck you, old man. You fucking, I ain't fucking. And, and Jerry's screaming so loud, you can't understand what he's saying. And fucking Louie is like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, nobody's I'm paying attention I'm not really paying attention to what Louie's doing I'm paying attention to the, all these big motherfuckers That are at Westside yeah. All coming around Louie Like go ahead and try something Because we're going to kill you <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I seriously was like I had not I mean I was fucking stuck my hand in my pocket. I had a knife. I was like, I'm going to cut one of these. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not you don't even know what's happening. I'm not going to take an ass whooping, you know, yeah. but it was crazy, man. And then before the end of that meet, um, Jerry, uh, Louie ended up offering Jerry $1,000 if he beat uh, Warman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I I just remember that, man, like the dude the whole time when Jerry went up. And Jerry should have made the lift. But Warman, Jerry was just like, you, you know, he was young, man, and impressionable. And people could get in his head sometimes. And he was like, this kid's a choker. But, I mean, Jerry honestly should have beat him that day. But but so. Louie, even though he kicked him out of the gym or whatever happened, still offered him 1000 if he could beat that guy. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, wanted to meet. <laughs> I, I fucking mean, love Louis, that. Louie wanted those numbers. I yeah. mean, and, you know, he loved Jerry. But, yeah. you know, here's the thing. Jerry, Jerry you know. Jerry had messed up, and Louie kicked him out for the right reasons. And Jerry, you know, it was just one of those things. Yeah. But um, it's like a, it was like a they were still like they're still homies, but they were pushing each other. That's, yeah. That's interesting. And so I mean, that's how I got into the weightlifting thing, and then I quit. You know, after that, I didn't lift weights for I don't know five, six years. So you don't. So you have that experience, but you don't then transition right into competing powerlifting. You mm. actually go away from it for a no, while. No, I want to. Yeah, I didn't do anything with powerlifting at all. So um, five, four, five years later, I can't re really remember. Um, it might have been less, but um, I heard you talk about uh, about you were training with Paul Keys or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so right? Steve Connors and Paul Keys and Steve Connors, man, back then he's a dude. He was a legit seven hundred pound bencher. Never trained at West Side. Train, I mean, dude, he just basically trained at Power Shack. I mean, dude, I mean, dude, he had hydraulics for arms. I mean, one of the baddest. <laughs> I've never heard that before. That's what you need, yeah. Cole. Yeah. That's, that's one of the good stack names. Yeah. yeah. Like, yes, geez. I'm fucking stealing that. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so, I mean, dude, he was just strong. So, we were training at Power Shack. So, Power Shack over in uh, 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 Westerville. Westerville, yeah. Yep. So, we were training there. And then um, me and Paul got invited to go to West Side. And we were like, okay, well, we'll go over here. Well, we tried to get Steve to go. Steve's a real, he's a real good family man. He's always been a real good father. His family's the most important thing to mm -hmm. him. And he was going to put, you know, his family and work first, you know, because he to take care of his family. So, 
you know, he did that and it and, and me and Paul ended up going to West Side and when I first went to West Side, I mean Jerry told Louie, I mean he told him I could bench five hundred. I've never done a bench meet or nothing in my life. Yeah. Ever. You never had a shirt on or anything at that? Nothing. So he lied to him. He fucking flat out lied. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, because that was a standard back. You had to bench five hundred or a shirt to even basically get in the Yeah, door. to be yeah. invited to go to the yeah. gym. So so he's like, uh, you know, so I I'm standing next to Louie, and he's like, yeah, he's, he can bench 500. And Louie's like, oh, okay, not right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, dude. So, I mean, I, you know, I ended up training there, I think, for two and a half months. And then George Halbert fucking told me. I, I had just done lockouts, and I mean, I worked up to like 695 or something in a lockout <laughs> and pin presses. And I was like, he's like, man, you know, he's like, you're probably ready for a meet. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So... <clears throat> So I'm like, <clears throat> damn, I need to do a meet. So Thursday. And you're bench only at that time. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's all I did was bench only. But I would go in on Fridays and I I would run the mono lift for guys. You know, <clears throat> Mondays I'd run the mono. I, I would help everybody out. But um, Hear everybody, uh, young lifters. Do you hear what he just said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I had to pay my dues. And I mean, I got stuck in a corner and it was 110 degrees and it's Chuck <laughs> Vogelpool. Uh, Dave Tate, Mike Rosario, and I mean, it, it's I can't smell anything, but it's fucking hot and nasty. Hey, and you're and, and with those three names, you ain't trying to mess the fucking monolith yeah, up. Yeah, you might die. Yeah, I yeah. remember seeing Mike Rosario one time, right? So in Pataskala, his uh, his in laws lived across the street from me, and I didn't know. One day I come out, I was taking the trash out, and there is one of the biggest motherfuckers I had ever seen. <laughs> Sitting across the street, just on a bucket, because they were working outside, just sweating like a motherfucker. I'm looking at this dude. I'm like, the fuck is this guy? He had a big old belly on him, yeah. but he's so fucking big. And I was like, that's that motherfucker. The old West Side videos. So I walked over and talked to him. But I remember thinking like, oh, th- that was probably the first actual West Side dude I saw from old videos that I ran into. And I was like, oh, this is. Th- these cats is a little different. He's a super nice guy. And he's a super nice guy. Yeah, like he's the <laughs> nicest guy in the but world. But if you got Chuck, him, and who was the – and Dave, you Dave, know, it's like yeah. these are three guys that were legends there. So yeah. you're running the monolith new guy that only benches. Yes. <laughs> it's so funny because, I mean, I would just be like, I, I, you know, I just do – I just, you know, pay, I figured I'd pay my dues. But then, you know, Thursday comes and I find a meet and it's America Online. That's how long ago this was. Okay. And it's America Online meet and it's a bench meet and – uh <laughs> I fucking was like, fucking signed up for it. So Friday I go in, I weigh in, I'm like 175. And uh, I'm having a party that night at my house. Of course. (laughs) Sounds about right. (laughs) And George is like, so George shows up to my house to the party and he's like, uh, I was like, hey man, I found a bench meet. He's like, awesome. I was like, yeah. Tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> First off, George Albert is one of the best bench pressers that's ever walked the planet. Yes. He's not really on the internet yes. a whole bunch. Yeah. So Tony's talking to a guy that already either has a world record or is about to have a world record very shortly yeah, so at well, that time. Yeah, well, see, he broke uh, – at that time, he he broke – he went 13 for 13 world records. Yeah. He broke 13 world records in a row. On the cover of Powerlifting USA, yeah, like all I mean, of that yeah. shit. And uh-huh. Tony's telling him at a party that and he has I'm a like, bench meet the next day. <laughs> so George is like, he looks at me and is like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. So I don't party or do nothing. I go to bed at like probably 1 o'clock in the morning. Wake up the next morning. So it's George Halbert, Clay Brandenburg, and Paul Keys. And we, and I mean, everybody been partying all night. So they get up and we're, we go to the meet. And this is like this is what everybody needs to understand about fucking powerlifting. It's a fucking, it's a show. I mean, dudes are just really a lot of like, ah, oh, I'm gonna fucking, do it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went to this meet and I get there, and I'm the smallest, one of the smallest dudes there, and I'm like, these dudes are walking around, ah, oh, fucking, you know, and I'm like, holy shit. So I'm in the warm up room. And fucking Paul's loading my weights. George is standing over at the doorway. This dude walks up and starts taking my fucking weights off my bench. And I'm like, okay. And then Paul, he's... He's a big dude, This is a big dude. Like, I mean, dude, he's like... I mean, he looked like a freaking lineman from the NFL. I mean, dude, he had hands on him, man, that were, like, bigger than my head. (laughs) And he was like, he's like looking, he's looking at George, and George is laughing his ass off. <laughs> it's the funniest shit in the world. And I'm looking at him like, what the hell? I was like, man, I'm in the wrong place. I was like, dude, this sucks. I'm going to get my ass kicked. I don't know why I'm doing here. God, dude, this may not be the sport for me. 
So, you know, I go and I lift, and Mariah Liggett is the um, – She's the judge. So mm-hmm. I know, and I tell everybody this, my first 500 was legit. Yeah. She ain't passing shit. Got it. She's a tough judge. So I benched 500, and there was a guy weighing 220, and he benched like 520. I had the second the second biggest bench of the meet. In the whole meet. In the whole meet. So you won lifter of the fucking well, day. No, I didn't. Because George says this. It, when you talk to George about it, he'll yeah. tell you, they got their fucking math off. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, don't say nothing. We're yeah, good. Yeah. No big deal. But that was my first introduction to, like, a powerlifting meet. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I Like, I thought everybody was going to smoke me. Yeah. Did, you know, because I'm not paying attention to what anybody else is doing. I'm not paying attention that I'm at the end of the flight. I have no idea. You're this completely green, bro. Right. So... <laughs> So it was really cool, though, and, and I thank Clay Brandenburg for this. But so I opened, I think, 450, mm-hmm. and then I go 490. I missed 490. So then you and, went up to 500. Yeah, and so Clay, well, George is like, take 490 again. And Clay's like, we didn't come here for fucking 490. We came here for 500. Motherfucker. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> West I side, mean, motherfucker. I fucking, yeah. I fucking benched it. And I, I was love like, that. And it was awesome, man. <laughs> what were you? Were you wearing denim back then? Or was it? No, it was, no, it was a, a poly it was, shirt? No, it was a denim. It was a denim shirt? Yeah, it was a Karen. Old Karen shirt? Yeah, it was an old Karen shirt. Yeah, that's what I had on. So, And then that's what it, it kind of started into that. And, um, I mean, that's how I got into weightlifting. And, and Talk to him about – a lot of people don't even know the whole Karen situation. She was a lady from Newark, right, that yes. sewed denim shirts. Because when I watched Louie bench, uh, that's uh, 600 on his birthday when I was like 17 years old or whatever. And I have to, I have to bring this up and show it to you. I t- told Luke about this. Louie gets the best bencher of the day. He benches 600 on his 50th birthday. It's in the West Side documentary. Right. I got 37th or something that day. I benched 250 pounds. I was in the same meet, right? <laughs> right. It was back in the trailer park. Uh, but all those guys were wearing these denim shirts, and she was actually sewing them like right. to wow. like size for right. all these guys yeah, out here in Newark. To, you'd go to her house, and you'd go in there, and she'd fucking be like, okay, what do you need? And, and Karen was cool as shit, and her <laughs> husband, Doug, I mean, he every time you go out there, you got to talk to him about race cars because he fucking had like three or four race cars. And, I mean, it was super she good was people. She was sewing gene material yeah, together, and, and bro. Yeah, and she was just like, you'd, you'd go out there and something would happen, your shirt would blow out, you could just take your shirt and go to her immediately and she'd fix it. And, you know, I mean, they were awesome. I mean, that's what I used to squat in denim briefs too. Yeah. You know, so it was like I, all this – I mean, they they were really good. To, she was always really good to West Side. She was she always treated me really good. And That's just early stuff, That's early cool. gear stuff yeah. that a lot of I people don't even a, know about. You know, I still have a Karen shirt at home. Yeah, it's cool. I, I probably I, it's probably my 500 shirt. Yeah, so I still have that shirt. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, that's basically how I got into weightlifting. I never. I never worked out. And, I mean, people can tell you. And you you could probably ask Luke. You could ask everybody else. Yeah. I mean, that that's why they call me the ninja. That's the, I, Louis gave me the nickname the ninja because I would come in and, like, Jeremy would tell you, like, I, it was like, how long? I don't know. I was out of the gym for months. I didn't, didn't come and train. And then I came in one morning. <laughs> so I come in one morning and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm going to go train. So I go in there and I'm training with three dudes and, and you know, yeah, they trained at Westside. They were Westside guys. So they start doing band work. Yeah. They're doing bands against red minis or blacks or whatever. I can't remember. So we start going. Well, I fucking beat almost all of them. <laughs> and fucking Louie loses his shit. And Jeremy's got to drive around with him for a couple of weeks. And every so often, Louie would be like, that motherfucking Tony Ramos. Yeah. Just comes in out of fucking nowhere and just fucks shit up and then disappears. Yeah. And that's how I got the nickname, the ninja. Because that's what he would call me. That's what he'd say. He's like, that motherfucker just comes in, fucks shit up, and then poof, gone. How did you get – so this is the one thing I've always loved about you, Tony, is that gamer mentality, though. Because you'd be the guy that would show up to the meet, probably don't have a bench shirt, borrow somebody's bench shirt, right. still beat guys, or – have maybe a couple ladies in the car from the night before yeah. while you're speed benching and then still but then like but you would always show up on the meets like even your big total you told me the story a bunch of times like you guys were drinking fucking shots of whatever the night before and you go to- yeah and you go total 2060 at right. 81 which is I still think maybe the one of the best totals ever at 81 so it's like 
and we had this conversation. He was like, well, if I would have drank some protein shakes. <laughs> or maybe if I would have. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe if I went to sleep yeah. on time. That's yeah. what Laura Phelps said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I, like- I argue that I think it's actually maybe it wouldn't have been as great. I think the mentality mm-hmm. that he kept is why he was able to do that great things. Now, yeah, maybe one or two meets you might have had a little bit more because of some of these other things. But I think part of the mentality of that is what I was drawn to and some of the things you shared with me when, when I was starting to go to some of the bigger meets and trying to hit these numbers and you're like, look, bro, like half these people, they don't want you to succeed. Right. Half of them might. But fuck, you're about to give them a show. Right. They signed up for it today. They're going right. to watch it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, would tell, I mean, that's what I'd say to people all the time. Watch what I'm about to fucking do. And it would be... I, I fucking love this. Yeah, is my, this I, is one of my favorite I, things. I, I literally would look at people and be like, <laughs> watch this motherfucker. Like, yeah. what, watch what about, is about to happen. Because, you know, and and I, I didn't really, like, I'm an introverted person. You're a pretty quiet dude. You so. know, so I don't, like, I would fucking, I would get done squatting, do something, and i just walk away. I don't, I don't fucking scream or yell. I, I've yeah. never been that person. But I think I'm a gamer because, I mean, just like last night, dude, I slept, I fucking slept an hour. I went and fucking play high limit blackjack all night last night. <laughs> fucking come home at like 2.30 in the morning, fucking went to bed and fucking woke up this morning at 5 and bam, right to the office, get my shit done. I don't know what it is, but I've always been that way. Yeah. I mean, even since I've been a little kid, I've always been that way. I've always been like, like when I know I got to do something, I fucking get it done. I, I push through. So what is I that? Don't what care. is that switch? Because there's, because I've kind of taken on that same mentality and try to teach that even to my kids like yo we're supposed to sh-, like on the days you show up you show up meaning like that you're you're supposed to get it over the edge because a lot of people the spotlight hits and then they go this way but it feels like when the spotlight goes on i go yes. one more notch and you seem to have that same mentality or yeah. same situation i mean it's like fucking it's i mean you and i both live in fear of failure yeah I mean, like ma- does. massive fear of failure. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, some people have fear, and they don't face that fear. Mm. We fucking go directly at that fear and go, yep. motherfucker, not today. Yep. Today is not today. I'm not not that. today. You know, it's just like when I was little, man. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I did. I fought a lot when I was little. I mean, it was just, it's not because I started fights. I didn't really, I didn't really start fights. I was a smaller dude. All my friends are taller than me or whatever. But, you know, there's always be this situation. But I'm that guy. Like, it's it's like you're going to say something and you're going to pop off and I'm going to smack you right in your mouth. Like, I've done it numerous times. <laughs> I mean, just like, yeah. you know, somebody says something, you know, and I tell people this. Like, so I was down. I was visiting me and my friends. We went down. We was down on, I think, Ohio at Champion Avenue at a fish and chips place just a couple months ago. And me and my dude was sitting there, and some dude popped off and said the wrong thing to him. My dude smacked him right in the mouth. I mean, open hand. Pow! And the dude was like, what? But and it wasn't like, it was like right now. Yeah. But that's the guys I grew up with. I mean, people just like, I, I tell There's you. There's a consequence when you talk crazy. Yeah. But see, the internet, though, people will get away with that a lot now, Tony. Well, yeah. I mean, it, well, yeah, because, I mean, it's real easy to hide behind your phone and yeah. be a fake person or yeah. do all this fake stuff. But, but you like, better not talk that shit at the fish and chips place. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just what it is, you know. I, and, that's and, and, like, I grew up with guys. Like, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I grew up with guys, and on Sundays we used to all meet up and play. We'd be down on the south end. And we'd be playing, you know, ball or whatever. We'd be doing whatever. And there's there would be a guy that said, "Hey man, can I borrow fifty cents to buy a pop?" Dude'd be like, "All right, cool. I'll let you borrow fifty cents. Give him fifty cents, or give him, you know, I got a buck. I'll let you borrow a dollar." So the following week, dude would be like, "And and you're talking about." I mean, we're all ballers. Yeah. Every one of us. I mean, we're we're we ain't hurting for money. We're doing all right. You yeah. know, we're I mean, we're okay. Following week, dude says, Hey man, you got that dollar you you borrowed? And the dude would say something stupid like, What do you mean? It's a fucking dollar. And dude, my dude beat the brakes off of him. <laughs> for a dollar. For a dollar. And it because it was the it's princi- a principle. Yeah. Principle of the matter. If you say, Hey, can I have a dollar? Yeah. Fucking give it to you. That's a different question. But when question. you say I borrow the dollar, 
You mm-hmm. just became a fucking. It was a. It was a business transaction, mm-hmm. and those are a lot of the guys I grew up with. I mean, and they were just old school guys that, yeah. you know, they all lived by that, and it was really funny because like now, shit doesn't work that way. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, you see guys that think that you know they belong someplace, you know, and they hey, oh, this is given to me. I should be here because I'm this, I'm that, you know. I mean. I mean, you've had that problem, you know? I mean, we've, <laughs> we've had... Both, we've, we've both seen that problem. Yeah, we've had that fucking conversation about yep. how guys are. And I told you, man, I mean, sometimes you got to shoot a fucking hostage. <laughs> <laughs> you got to clip that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the truth. And I told him, I'm going to shoot him fast. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Right. So good. Hey, Kyle's giving me a square finger. All right, yeah, yeah. we got we to gotta have a fucking uh, a quick little break, but we'll be right back. <laughs> The Round Table Podcast is brought to you by Max for Muscle. With us is the Director of Sports Performance, Tyler Treadway. Mr. Treadway. Hey, guys. Uh, Tyler Treadway here. So uh, the good thing about uh, Max for Muscle is when you see this NSF logo, that means all the stuff that's in this bottle is actually in this bottle. And if you're any type of athlete, that means you're never going to test positive for anything banned substance. You know what? We just brought in OU University. was down there the other day. Everyone's getting jacked, wearing Max Effort, taking Max Effort. It's unbelievable. Reach out to me at what's Treadway's email uh, address? Treadway at Max for Muscle. Treadway at MaxEverMuscle.com. Back to the show. All right. Thank you, Mr. Treadway. Uh, back to the show. <laughs> Great. Uh, thanks. Oh, hey. All right. Corey here. So, all right. So, we're at the point where, well, yeah, we shot some hostages. We'll, we'll move on from there. All right. So, now you're in. You're embedded in Westside. You've done the meet. Where do you go? Where does it kind of go from there, Tony? So, people know, obviously, you have talent. You're strong. You're around some of the best in the world. Did you, when you, first off, let me back. When you first go to Westside, do you know, like, what it really is? Or is it just, to you, is it more than a gym that's local? Because a lot of local guys maybe at first don't understand how Westside's looked at outside of here. You know what I'm saying? At that time, because the Internet's not like Um, it is now. Yeah, but I'm not, like, you know, some people are fearful or think that, you know, all Westside, these guys are this or that. So, I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you a story. Please. Okay. <laughs> and I'm not saying his name. Jerry O can attest to this. So, <clears throat> how do I do this? So, <laughs> uh, me and Jerry had made some, you know, w- w- some things were going on or whatever. And I gave Jerry uh, some supplements. Okay. And somebody at Westside owed him the money for him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. Here we go. So Jerry tells me, well, he's not paying me this and that. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. And I'd never been to Westside before in my life. This is when it was on Demarest. Okay. So I went to Westside right right, right as it was moving from Demarest to there. But this is my mentality. So you fucking figure out who I am. And this dude's 6'4", 300 pounds probably. So Jerry tells me, and I'm like, oh, okay. So what's the phone number over there? So I call Westside. And, you know, me and Lou had a conversation about this. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Lou just kind of laughed about it. But I fucking called over there, and I asked for the guy, and he got on the phone. And I said, I don't know the fuck you think you are, but you owe me, you owe Jerry money, so you fucking owe me money. And if I have to come down there, I'm going to get my fucking money. He's like, whoa, 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 hey, man, don't be calling this phone saying this. <laughs> and I said, and, and this was just my mentality of who yeah. I was. And, man, I don't even know if I should tell the story, but... I fucking I I basically told the dude, look, you fucking I want my money. Yeah. So I'm sure it's exactly how you said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the PG version. But, but it was it was crazy because that's just who I was. I mean, my whole life growing up like that, I was the guy. So you shaking down motherfucker for money before you even went lifted there. Right. Amazing. So I fucking at my <laughs> of course. I'm at my house and he's yeah, I gave my address. I said come over to my house because he's gonna bring me my money. So he comes to my house, and I'm working. I, I have this garage in the back of my house, and I'm out there, and I'm working on my. I have a. I have this fucking dude. I had a badass fucking forty foot Donzi with fucking twin five hundreds. What the fuck is that? Nitrous. Is that a boat? Yeah, okay. it was a speedboat. <laughs> yeah, fucking do hundred and ten on the water. Fuck. So I'm back there working on this boat, and he comes, and he's like, he comes, and he's like. Walking back there, and this is big. He's a big, big dude. motherfucker. Like, dude, like, you know, I have a privacy fence, and you fucking. You basically look over top of the privacy fence, and he comes back there, and he was like, Is Tony here? And I go, I'm fucking Tony. And he's like, He's like, Oh. 
And he's like, okay, I thought you'd look different. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't get it confused, bud. And then yeah. me ended up, I mean, I ended up becoming friends with the guy, and we yeah. ended up being cool or whatever, yeah. but that was my mentality. That's yeah. who I was. So when I went to West Side, I respected West Side more than anything. Yep. Because it gave it really gave me a, uh, it gave me a really good place to to be. It felt like it was a family. It was, mm-hmm. you know, and I loved every guy there. I mean, I respected everybody at West Side. Some of the people, you know, could be assholes or whatever, but I mean, going there, I, it was it was amazing. But when I went there, I always had the mentality and it's it's fucked up. I've always been this way my whole life. And I don't know why, but I've never looked at something and said, I, I you know, because I'd look at people would go, man, that guy's huge. And I never would look at him like, where? Who? Which guy? <laughs> There's only one guy I've ever seen that I was like, holy fuck, that's a big man. And it was uh, Chris, the dude that was seven foot tall. Oh, uh, the dude that pulled 900? Yes. 905? Yes. Uh, um- He's the one that bent all the bars at OU, which is why they don't let anybody do powerlifting yeah. down there anymore. <laughs> yeah, but he fucking walked in the door at Westside, man, and I never forget he walked in the door and he tucked his head underneath like this. Yeah. And when he stepped in, he blocked the whole door. So, uh, good story. Like, Holy shit. Our main deadlift bar, I ordered off Lou. He brought it out to one of the meets out here in Newark, and he brought it to me because I was going to put it in the office over at the old MP office. And they go, hey, can we use it for the meet today? I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever, break it in. And then Spiegel, that's his last name. Chris, yeah, Chris pulls Spiegel. 905 on it that day. Yeah. Fucking stiff leg. He's yeah. like seven foot tall, 400 pounds. Yes, and he's and the so nicest guy. To say it got broke in <laughs> is an yeah. understatement. But that's the bar that we pull on all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was, and he's, like, I when I had, I used to have an Instagram page. It's gone now, but he, uh, I, I took a picture with him, and I'm standing on top of the fucking, um, the, um, box uh, no it's a um reverse hyper calf yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, I yeah. Been that's jeremy <laughs> but i'm standing on top of the calf machine and i'm like got like this and he my head's directly besides his and i put some posts like my training partners are bigger than yours. yeah <laughs> but i mean he was just, i mean yeah that's the big i mean that's the only guy i've ever seen is that also know? why you probably really weren't scared to take big weights to tony because yeah i were, never gave a fuck man i mean i know i didn't i didn't care like it Weights never scared me. I mean, dude, the first time I ever used a squat suit it was on a Christmas day. And me, <laughs> of course and, it was. me and George went in, and George had the fucking flu, and nobody else was there. And I put this fucking this, uh, uh, squat suit on, and it's uh, but first uh, a canvas. And I fucking, George was like, all right, and we work it up, and I work up to like uh, 500 pounds. And we put 500 pounds on the bar, you know, put the straps up real lightly, and I stand up and George releases the rack and I go to go down and it fucking buckles my legs and I fucking <laughs> fall over and I'm holding it like this and fucking George is behind me and he's fucking sweating and sick as fuck and he gets me up and we get it back in the rack shit and show. I'm like holy shit and George's like you try it again I'm like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on Christmas day yeah, yeah, I mean what else is going on right and so I mean we just I mean that's how it was there yeah. and that's what's funny is like so nobody knows this though so, in 2008, I had uh, C5, C6 ne- uh, neck fusion. And the reason I started squatting and deadlifting is because the doctor told me, you'll never squat or deadlift. Got it. Okay? And I said, oh, okay. So, I st- that's when I started. So, I-, I spent a month trying to figure out how to train. And that's when I came up with the kettlebell exercise. Because mm-hmm. I figured out that exercise during that time. The kettlebell is hanging on the bar with the with the bands. Oh, gotcha. Tony basically made that up. Yeah. So <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So Which I mean, everyone like, uses. Yeah, nowadays. but I had. And then what's funny is, it's like I, it really belongs to Westside because they gave me a platform to do it there. It's like you know, if I worked for you know some company and built some machine, it's theirs, you know. But yeah. they gave me a place to do it. But um, like it's funny because I have all kinds of video of when we started doing it and when it happened and you know so like if it was if somebody wanted to argue with me i'd be like oh okay motherfucker here come and look at this yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so um but uh started it, squatting and yeah so i so i started you know squatting and deadlift and and, and nobody would so amy weisberger i love Amazing. her to death so um we're that's the girl that out squatted me the first time i went there <laughs> so amy <laughs> just goes, what it is so amy goes um 
we're all sat, standing around. And I'm like, Amy, I think I'm going to start squatting and deadlifting. And she, and Amy's not an asshole. She's not a mean person. She starts laughing hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. Okay. And taps me on my arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good luck, Tony. Who's the best female lifter in the world at that time? Right. By far. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and she starts laughing. And I'm like, oh, okay. So nobody will let me squat and deadlift with them. They basically wouldn't let me work out with them. So George started coming in at 5 o'clock in the morning with me. And then if he didn't make it, I'd be there by myself and squatting and do all my stuff all by myself. So 10 months later, after neck surgery, at 179 pounds, I, I totaled 1,900. Or 1,800, I'm sorry. Yeah. It was 1,800. But you went 10-time body weight. 10-time ten, ten body weight. And... <laughs> And this is like typical Louie, you know. He's like talking to everybody. Hey, you did a good job today. You did this, you did that. And George goes, hey, uh, we got an elite lifter too. Tony, he totaled 1,800. Didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Went on. And, and that's, that's how I got into fucking. And then after that. Then he was like. People were like, holy shit, like this dude knows what he's doing. And mm. he's, he's getting strong. And. You know, like I. You started messing with the morning crew then, pretty much, Tony. Yeah, that's all I. Yeah, that's pretty much who I squatted with all the whole time. And what's funny is, like, I can move weights. I mean, and, well, Chuck helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Chuck was, uh, cause I always ran a monolift for Chuck, so I they'd get done squatting, and I'd start squatting sometimes, and nobody would help me. And a couple times, Chuck like went off on dudes in the gym. He's like, you motherfuckers, man. He waited for everybody here to fucking squat, goes through two fucking crews, and you guys can't even fucking run. And Chuck would run the rack for me. That's a, that's you how know? you guys got tight then. Yeah, huh? yeah. I mean, because Chuck, always, I mean, he respected me, you know. And so, and and that was it, man. And like I said, I, I you know, I mean, you know, Chuck, and Chuck said, he told people, he's like, I would tell that motherfucker, try this. And he would go, okay. And never, I never once said, no, I'm not trying that shit. No, nope, I'm not doing that. I would try whatever they fucking said. And they meant, you know, sometimes, you know, it might look like I'm about to get broke. Yeah. But sometimes the shit worked out and they're like, God damn it. Like, well, what? in the first time I saw, um, I didn't realize I was seeing Tony, but this is, uh, and I think Mike Wolf always uh, called him what Flex Ramos since yes. then. Right. So in 2010, I believe it was, or no. 2008 2009 flex magazine runs probably one of the most in-depth west side training articles that a bodybuilding magazine had ever done and even louis wrote for powerlifting usa forever and i'd started reading that stuff but it wasn't really breaking out the true like training split i still have the magazine at my house and it's like a probably an eight page thing and, wow. and he's on the opening spread doing a fucking rack pull and it, it goes through all the guys' numbers, how they split the dynamic effort and the max effort. And this is right after I moved to Columbus, or I had been in Columbus for a while, but I just kind of got back into doing meets, like NASA meets and shit. And I was like, this shit is so different than the Arnold training I've been doing. I, right. I want to try this stuff. That's when I started kind of becoming obsessed with conjugate method. And then Tony was the one that looked the closest to me at the end of the day. Right. We, we still don't really look like each other, but I was like, he's the one that weighs under 200 pounds right. that I can actually identify with. <laughs> so I started really kind of paying attention to the things that he was doing, even though he wasn't doing a ton of content, but I was paying attention to like numbers and things that were happening. But my first actual, you know, kind of uh, non-interaction, but understanding of who Ramos was as I saw him in Flex Magazine. Yeah, and, that, and what's funny is, is that's what they use, like, so the CrossFit stuff that they were doing – Louis was like, hey, do you want to do this for me? He's like, because them guys can't fucking relate yeah. to other people. So Louis would have me, you know, like do Help squats. Seminars, and, right? Yeah. Well, not seminars, just in the gym. They mm -hmm. take pictures and do things like that and, and all that stuff, you know, just so they, and, you know, they'd shoot videos and, and things like that. And, um, I mean, that, that was really the thing that, you know, a lot of people, you know, would be like, you know, like you said, a lot of people were like, oh, I can relate to what he does, yeah. and that's the biggest problem with powerlifting, man. Is guys think, well, Jesus Christ, I got to weigh 400 pounds, I got to be this big, I got to yep. have this belly, I got to have this leverage, I got to do this, I got to do that. Which and, is what we're trying to change with our crew, because all the guys are in shape, got abs, fucking right. lifting good weights. I it's mean, like, yeah, you can be strong. I mean, it's just like I used to tell people all the time: big ain't strong, strong is strong. Clip that, and, and motherfuckers would be like, <laughs> they would be. I mean, and I tell people that. And I would do shit in the gym that people would be like, holy shit. And the reason I'm in that fucking uh, muscle and fitness magazine like that is we're doing them rack pulls. Yeah, against And I fans fucking too. smoked everybody that day. Yeah. <laughs> but, but 
but I remember that day because I remember those guys shooting that video, and I remember fucking watch this motherfucker. Yeah. Like, that's, I mean, I was, like, full go. Like, I was on it, and that's my mentality. And I remember the camera guy going, dude, I've never seen anything like that before. Oh, yeah. (laughs) He's like, holy shit, dude. And I was explosive and really, really fast. Yeah. And, and that you was got the, the fucking thing. opening spread, killer. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was cool. But that's a good, but that's also back to the mentality you talked about. That's what led to being the guy. It wasn't a lot of these other dudes that had crazy numbers at that time, but the opening thing is fucking Ramos doing a fucking rack pull right. against bads. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of guys there a lot better than me, but also they weren't gamers either. Yeah. You know? And, I mean, I, I'm the guy. Like you said, I ain't, I'm a fucking true gamer. I mean, but also I fucked up a lot. Like, I mean, I fucking partied my ass off. I'd be fucking on a two-day bender and be like, <clears throat> I love I, the honesty. I need to I need to go fucking work out because my training partners need me today. Yep. And George was like, man, I, you know, George, I mean, George Halbert, dude, honestly, man, I mean, he's my best friend in the whole fucking world, dude. I mean, me and him are, dude, for tw- over 20-some years, he's picked me up every Sunday. And if he didn't pick me up on Sunday, it was because I was like, nah, I'm, I'm gone. And he would text me every Saturday and say, your house. Or I'd give him an address of where I might be. And he'd pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> and he would take me to the gym. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I'd be like, yeah, my house. And then at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to make it. Yeah. I'm nowhere close to where I need to be. But, you know, it's like, you know, George was like, uh, dude, he, he helped me so much. With everything, man. I mean, he, that that dude, like, he 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 saw what I had, and man, he would always say, "God," because I'd be, man, I'd just be in the gym, like fucking killing it, doing this, doing that, doing this, and George would always be like, "I hope you stick with this," <laughs> but I'm just waiting for the fucking shoe to drop, because yeah. I would just get so good and so good, and then all of a sudden, I'd be like, gone. And be gone for three or four or five days and, you know, going to Bender, drinking and doing ecstasy. And, I mean, it was it was really crazy because I, I don't know I don't know what I was doing back then. I, I mean, I had a crazy mentality, but, you know, but then I would fucking, like I said, I, I went to, uh, I was out all night one night. Went to this Halloween party called Trauma. And uh, I was up all night. <laughs> Sounds like some trauma's yeah. coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I went down there. I was up all night, and I was actually with a, uh, I was with a couple dudes from Westside, and, um, you know, and we were down there, and it doesn't close till 5 a.m. <laughs> so we're down there for this big Halloween party and shit, and I, <laughs> I. I, all I remember is talking to this chick in a little Bo Peep outfit all night long. Of course. And then, <laughs> and then I, I remember like, okay, I'm going, I'm leaving. I, I fuck it, I'm going home. So I go home, and I get home at like, I don't know, 5:30. So I get home at 5:30. I'm fucking laying in bed. I can't sleep. I'm like, fuck, man, I can't fucking sleep. Six o'clock. I'm like, fuck it. Grab my gear. It's a Friday, and I go to the gym. Well, I go to Waffle House. I eat some, <laughs> of course. I, I eat some food. Yeah. Necessities. I, I eat some food, and then I fucking, I remember, I remember leaving there, and I got a to-go cup of water, and I fucking stood in the middle of the parking lot. I was like, <laughs> poured the shit all over my head, and I was like, all right, I'm ready. Fucking wipe myself down. I go to Westside, and Greg Panora and Luke, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, we're squatting that day, and it's, it's still on the internet right now. And uh, it's for, uh, uh, I can't forget, some supplement company. I can't remember the name oh, of it. Oh, the old uh, At Large. Yes, At Large. Yeah, yes. They sponsored before I did. Yes, back in at, the day. at Large. Yeah, so it was an At Large video. And I'd been up all night long, partying all night long, and I think I squatted like 700 with straps down. <laughs> That's funny. And, I, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, and I'm being dead honest. And, you know, and this is one thing that I think that I'm trying to do now is be honest with some of the things I did because – Maybe that's why I did some of this shit because I couldn't be honest with myself about, you know, me or whatever. But, I mean, I was, I was high as hell on ecstasy. I mean, I was in, in smoke. I was, bl- I was blown out of my mind, and I still squatted like seven hundred. And I was like, holy shit! A lot of people so that are fans of West Side. And, and I, I, I want to preface that yeah. like, don't do that shit. Yeah, yeah. That's, like fucking, <laughs> that's like really dumb. Say shit. no to it's drugs, a, kids. It's a really bad thing, man. I mean, really, really is, dude. I mean. 
But I think what you're what you're really telling though, Tony, is that there was this all in ride or die gangster gamer mentality that was happening across the board oh, which is yeah. also what made you guys great because everyone was kind of operating in that kind of vein maybe some more extreme than others but the mentality was all in line so Jessica you know who Jessica Martinez is Mm-mm. so she's uh she's a pretty good lifter uh she did some stuff raw but I was friends with her and um she uh she came one time to stay with uh me and uh, the my ex girlfriend. We were she came to stay with us and she wanted to see videos and I had all these old I got a bunch of old videos of me and Chuck squatting and all this stuff and she's watching the video and she's like, You're a fucking thug. I was <laughs> like, What? And I mean literally I never really paid attention to it. So if you ever watch me lift in the gym and the way I act and the way I am I mean, I fucking literally, I, I remember some. she said to me, she's like, you look like Mike Tyson. Because I would walk, and I remember, like, I here's how I talk to myself. I'm like, you fucking piece of shit, don't let this fucking guy beat you. You fucking gonna let this guy run over you? Fuck this motherfucker. Like, f-. And I would literally be, like, in my head, man. And I mean, I would, f- I remember feeling like I could get myself so worked up that I felt like the fucking front of my skull was gonna blow off. <laughs> Because I would just be like, you know, and you're and, heavy competitive. You're yeah, just so competitive. Yeah, I would just be like, and, and, and but it, it's really crazy because I was more competitive against myself. So, I yeah. tell myself like, you fucking loser, you fucking can't do. I this. call myself like, a bitch ass hoe all the time. Right. <laughs> I mean, exactly. <laughs> I'm and, like, pull this fucking weight, you little bitch ass hoe. Right, and that's the whole point of like, you know, getting into yourself and. And I remember her saying that, and I because when she said it, I was like, what? Well, "I'm a nice guy. What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah. I I try to be a good guy, and then I lo- wa- I actually watched the videos, and I got all these VHS tapes, and me and George actually sat down there for like nine hours watching old powerlifting That's videos, cool. and uh, I was watching it, and I said, "Fuck, man!" It's a mentality. I was like. I really was fucking like, you know, I looked like I was gonna eat shit, and that's yeah. what I was with, you know, and that's when I was training with Chuck. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I I trained with Chuck, man, and most people will say, well, how did you do it? And I, I don't think Chuck would – I mean, Chuck would do shit to you because he tries to push you and he wants to take you into deep waters. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, he's I don't, he's never intentionally tried to – you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because there are some you stories out there best. about him trying to hurt people and this and that. But. I mean, dude, like, here's the thing. He got a choice. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, motherfucker, it's not like he's got a gun to your head. Yeah, he's facts. like, you know, he's not fucking, he's not holding, he's not holding your wife hostage over here, going, hey, jump off that fucking cliff, or she yeah. goes first. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's really the way it is. I mean, yep. you can say no, and I mean, there's some shit that Chuck tried with me before, and then we did it, and then I beat him at it, and then he's like, okay, <laughs> come here, do this, and now I'd be like, yeah, Chuck, I'm going home. I'll yeah. see you later. <laughs> And, but that's how you have to do you it. You earn the respect to be able to say no. Right. And, you know, <laughs> and, I mean, I mean, I, I fuck, listen, dude, I may be dumb, but I'm not plumb dumb. Yeah. And I know, like, Chuck is like, you know, he's one of those dudes. He'll take you into deep waters and he'll fucking beat you to death, you know. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and I just threw certain things. That I was like, okay. And, you know, Chuck one time hurt himself in the gym. His fucking hamstring was fucked up. So he tapes it up, and he's taped his suit up, and he's doing everything, and he takes another squat, and, man, his fucking leg tucked bad on him. And, I, I mean, it, he, he could have hurt himself. And, you know, ch- people don't want to ever tell Chuck no. Mm-hmm. They don't ever want to tell him no. And I remember that day, and Chuck, you know, he kind of got mad at me, but um, I just said to him, like, because he's like, hey, yeah, everybody's like, yeah, man, try it again, do this. Hey, you think I should? I'm like, no, dude, you're done. Stop. I'm not. I'm not sticking around for this. I'm not sticking around for you to watch you hurt yourself, man, dude. So, and he, and he was kind of like, what the f- you mean, fucking hurt my, you know? Yeah. But it, it, it I think Chuck respected me for that, and he stopped, and fucking lived the fight another day. Because I told him, I said, Chuck, I don't care about your powerlifting, man. I care about you as a person. And that's what I really did care, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, he fucking blows his hamstring off, and then he has no powerlifting. Then what person does he become? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you know, and those that was a lot of problem. There was a lot of things at Westside that you know people would say yes to. You that know? they might have should have said no to. Yeah, that they, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, there's a there's a push point, you know, and you know, 
you know you know when to quit but then you also got guys there that just <laughs> they're just gonna quit yeah, yeah yeah i mean they're gonna lay down and just stop so we good on time need another break soon all right so all right now we're at this point uh let's talk about what the gym means to you did for you and just like how um when you walk in even today what what kind of hits you uh so like west side's always been this for me that, that me and louis i'm still fucking mad at him i don't care if the fuck is dead or not he's still pissing me off with this because he <laughs> fucking we had a chalk bowl there and that chalk bowl had been there since yep. i started and I remember I used to put my hands in that chalk bowl, and I'd, I'd fucking, every time I'd fucking chalk my hands, I'd be like, the best in the world's been here. This is the best in the world. This is, you know, and, that, and that was my thing for Westside. And fucking Louie took it out of there and fucking threw it away. <laughs> and then I asked him about it because they were still somewhere, I'm sure. I'm then, sure, yeah. Then I asked him about it, and he was like, I fucking I threw that away. And I was like, okay, well, fuck you, asshole. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I was pretty upset about it, but... You know, like it's Louis Jim, but what Westside has done for me, man, it gave me a place. I mean, if it wasn't for Westside, I'd be dead or in jail. I mean, God's honest truth, I would. I wouldn't have fucking, I would have fell off the rails. I mean, there were so many times that, you know, it pulled me back into what I needed to be pulled back, back on into track. And, and keep my keep my life straight. And what's funny, man, is like, if you would see me, you, for the most part, you couldn't tell if I was fucked up. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell if I was whatever. I functioned fairly well. I worked all the time. I didn't miss work. It was crazy, the, some of the things I did. But what Westside gave for me, man, was it gave me a place to fucking go and, like, a family. And, you know, a lot of guys don't understand that. See, a lot of guys there don't, you know, uh, here's what Westside was. It was all the misfits back in the day. It was all the guys that couldn't fit in someplace else. Yep. You know, guys that couldn't walk in a regular gym and get along with other people, you know, because, you know, it's, you know, fucking hurry up and go. And then we all had the same pit bull mentality, you know. It's like, basically, I, if you had to ask me what, what if, if I had to paint a picture of Westside, I'd fucking paint a yard full of fucking pit bulls that were fucking, that were rescued. Yeah. And that's what they were. We were a bunch of fucking pit bulls that were rescued by Louie, and Louie said, Hey guys, here's the structure. Here's 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 a plan. Here's a place for you to go, and then here's shit for you to have a release and do things. And guess what? A motherfucker fucks with you. We got your back. And that's exactly how it was, man. And everybody there had each other's back. I mean, I can remember on training days, you know. I mean, fucking J.O. Holdsworth and fucking Paul Keys were competing against each other. And we just, it, it was just, you could feel the fucking tension it, between them two while we were in the gym. But at the end of the day, they were both West Side guys. Yep. You know? And no matter what, that's what we cared about was West Side guys. I mean, there was a lot of shit that went on there. And 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 that's what it was for me, man. I mean, it's it was like Louie was a father to me. I mean, he, he truly was. I mean, he didn't – he's done some things for me, man, that, you know, most people, you know, do, nobody knows about and I don't ever speak of, you know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's, he's, he's always respected me, you know. I mean, I, I, lot, I did a lot of things at Westside that – it's funny. I should have been kicked out. I'm sure. I, I should have <laughs> – I, I mean, I should have been kicked out of Westside. I should have been kicked out for missing meets. I should have been kicked out because I, I, I lifted in other federations. I mean, think about it. I mean, I'm the guy that fucking lifts in the, in the Lexington meet, which Louie doesn't like us lifting in. And I – at 198, and I totaled, I think, 2,000. 2010, 2010 at that meet, and then I cut the 181 the following week and lifting Kenny Patterson's meet and totaled 2020, a 2030, at a lighter weight, and Louis shows up to the meet to kick me out, <laughs> and I know why he was there. That's the one thing that I I took from is it doesn't matter if it's the strongest guy, if you're not fucking with the program, you're gone. Yeah, he didn't give a fuck. Like yeah. I mean, you know, it's like. A, you, you know, like Louis said, you know, there'll be another world record holder. They'll fucking, you know, there's, you know, a thousand guys break world records. I mean, you know, but, you know, records are borrowed. You don't yeah. own it. And these guys come in there and they think, well, I broke a world record, so I should be this guy. And that's not what it is. Hmm. I mean, they don't understand, man. Like, there's a whole fucking story about paying your dues. And this guy goes through this Hold whole on. thing. Do we need to take a break real quick. He's yeah, we, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, good. So he says, 
you know, you have people, employees, you got guys in this gym, and you got guys that work with you and all this stuff, and he's fucking, and this is the worst words any man could utter to you in this fucking gym, anywhere, anything that you're doing, Corey. A dude tells you, I paid my dues. Motherfucker dues are paid every day. Hmm. Every day. Like, that's the that was the difference with Westside. You paid your dues every day. You didn't pay them on the fuck. Oh, well, I broke a record, so I can just fucking sit back and, and do nothing. No, you fucking paid dues every day. I feel like I'm paying the dues every day, bro. Well, you got no choice. Yeah. That's the thing. That's like I told you. Like, when these guys come here, you fucking pay your dues every day. If you don't, they're not going to be successful. They're going to fucking do mediocre shit. Yeah, listen, I was a fuck up. Yeah, I missed a lot of shit, but I guarantee you one thing. When I was there, fucking thousand percent in. Yeah. And I paid my dues, and I was paying them every day, and I still fucking pay them. Facts. So. And you got Louis numbers, too. Right. I mean, the, that, which is what he cared about. Yeah. <laughs> all, at, right. At the most, that was the thing. Like, you kept bringing numbers, you kept bringing A games. I've only, I think I've only bombed out of three three meets. Yeah, I was there with one of them. Yeah, was yeah, one. that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking your face. We're gonna we're, yes, we're gonna take a quick break. We got uh, a little bit more with Tony Ramos. We'll be right back. All right, we're back with Tony Ramos. Um, all right, Tony. Before the break, the second break. This is gonna be a, this is a good episode. Is we talked about he had only bombed three times ever. One of those times was with your boy. We it drove. was three or four. I, I can't yeah. remember. I might have been really fucked up one of those <laughs> yeah. times. We drove six hours to Tennessee. It was Tennessee, Vegas. Um, That's a long ways to go to bomb. Go all the way to Vegas. Sorry, man. I had a fucking really good party time there. It was good. <laughs> uh, Tennessee, Vegas. Um, and Tennessee again. And it might have been one other one. I don't know. But I don't think so. Maybe. So... The make weight story. I go. I'm I'm planning on opening at 650. I've told this story because that's how what ended up squat every day shit. But I'm 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 basically like training with the guys almost the whole time. I'm pumped. There's an amateur day on Saturday, the the pro day, which is Tony's day, is on Sunday, and I get to we go to like a jacuzzi sauna place, some local spot to make weight, and I didn't realize I was already kind of dry when I got there. So I weighed about 195 the beginning of that week. But I was lean enough that it was, like, pretty solid. And I get there, and we get in. The, Tony likes to cut weight in the jacuzzi, put your, put a fucking towel over your head, and just kind of camp out. I'm in that bitch for, like, the hot tub for, like, at least an hour. And I get out, and I'm only down a pound. And I'm looking at, like, and it's, like, 192 still. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and I've got it. I've already set to open at 650. And I'm thinking, and I'm smoking all of my weights up to that. So then I'm looking at Tony, like... We're about, like, this is going to be a long fucking night. Well, I I mean, I used to go from, like, 200 to 181 in 11 hours in a hot tub. But that was with George. And I yeah. know, he, I, and, you know, and so it's funny because I'm like, yeah, man, just cut it in a hot tub. We fucking, you just We're stay good. Stay in, get out. You, you know, we'll get you in, get you out. So fucking Corey's laying in his fucking hot tub. And he's like, dude, I'm dying. And he's, like, laid back. And he's and I'm like, keep the towel on your head. He's like, my face is <laughs> like melting, it's melting off. off. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, your face is not melting off. <laughs> and, dude, it was like, I mean, I could tell he was miserable. But you got to help him cut weight. So you just got to be an asshole to him. I mean, he can't tell you, like, the last couple hours of me cutting weight with George, man. I'm, like, cutting weight. And I'm looking at him. And I'm thinking, I hope you fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish you, I wish you'd have a heart attack and fall over right yeah. now so I could just get out of here and walk away because you're that fucking miserable. So, Corey, dude, I give it to you, bro. You're, you are a fucking gamer for sure because <laughs> he was, dude, he was ready to quit. He's like, fuck, I'm dying. We go back to the hotel room, and this motherfucker Soaked stays in the bathtub up. Soaked every 3 a.m. And he fucking <laughs> cuts weight yeah. and makes it. He wakes up. I'm like, I got finally won A1. And I got like three in the morning. And I'm like yeah. laying in the bathtub. And I, but the problem is I made weight, but then my weight never came really back on right. enough. And, and my suit was fucking, I put my suit on the next day. It was like, <laughs> it look, yeah. It looked like I put on like a big guy pants. I was like, oh, I am fucked. Yeah, he put on a pair of Spanx and was oh, like, this shit's good. Oh, so bad. <laughs> I remember because I, I opened up, I sh in the warm up room, I didn't feel that bad. I opened up at 650 and I hear Louie going, back, back, back. The bar feels 
I, I felt so little under the bar. The bar was all over the place. I felt like I didn't know where to sit at. None of the gear felt... I looked like I'd never even fucking squatted before. It was so embarrassing. It was fucking terrible. I just, I never even, every time I would hit depth, it didn't even go anywhere. Right. Oh, so fucking bad. But we had fun. Oh, yeah. And then we drove <laughs> home six hours. Yeah. Going, and then Tony bombs out the next day. Yeah. I sat there and watched his bomb. So neither of us made one lift the whole fucking weekend. Right. We drive back, and and uh, that and that's really where a lot of stuff changed for me because that that next day it's where I Google search what happens if I fucking squat every day because I go I'm never fucking feeling that way again. I needed to get more comfortable, understand it more, and like kind of go on that you know that type of st- that that stuff. And that that was really like a good path for me because then it kind of separated me with my programming and things. We well, see the difference between me and Corey. He was thinking that, and I was like, I'm finding a party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, that was crazy. I mean, and that was a. I I mean, it was amazing because, I mean, I got a lot of respect for you that day. It was tough. Because you didn't, you know, you could have just said, fuck it, man, I'm done. I mean, I can tell you, I've seen I've seen many a people quit. Yep. Many people bailed out, fucking done, I don't want to do this anymore. And, you know, you didn't. And that says a lot about who you are. I think that was like probably 2000, roughly like maybe 2015, 16-ish, around um, there. Um well, it was probably 2014, 14, 15. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're still competing. 14, yeah, 15. 15 was my last meet, was okay. the Relentless meet, was Got the it. last meet I ever did at, at Relentless. So. so, yeah, 14, 15, and I'm trying to squat 781 at that meet. I just literally, this is 2022 and this is happening. I squat 694 and a half right. at 181 as a master, you know, a, a two months ago. Right. So, I mean, I've been pushing for that because I've squatted 700 multiple times at – 98 and 220 and whatever but i i was really pushing to be able to make it at the 81 right around 700 it just literally happened i've been at it this whole fucking time tony well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, but you gotta be patient with it yeah. too you know and i mean i tell people this i told you this a long time ago i said man i said you're gonna get stronger in the next five years yeah a lot stronger like things are gonna start developing you're gonna you know and there's a it's a weird a weird thing you're gonna have this and i told you i said there's a window yep and when that window hits it's the old man strength better, everybody's talking yeah, about <laughs> you better fucking just ride that window and, and and start pushing through that window because when that happens you got a four or five year period there that mm. you know you can really do some shit and i think you're right there right now yep. i mean you just gotta fucking you just gotta go keep cranking i, I mean because you're doing another meet here soon, aren't you? Or? There's a bunch of guys doing one, and uh, some of them, Trey signed up in September. Some of the guys doing December. I'll probably go first of the year. I'm going to try to work some raw stuff for a little while. and then. But even just like uh, benching 315 again raw after having that real bad shoulder injury, I said to the camera, oh my, watch this motherfucker. Right. Hitting 315, no pain, off my chest. Like felt unbelievable after having a fucking completely ruptured super spinatus off. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, think about what you did there, too. Yeah. Like somebody told you, you don't. Uh, that's wrong. You shouldn't do that. No, you need to do this. Oh, you should fix it this way. This is what needs to happen. That's how this needs to happen. Yep. You know, you can't do that. You know, it's I think like I a, learned that mentality from you guys, man. There's always a way. There's something else. Well, to there's always it. something, right? There's always something. I no. mean, I, I, I don't know, man. I can, I can't tell you that I've ever went to West Side and. I mean, I've always gave it a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, but if I wasn't going to give it 100%, I'd just grab my bag and leave. I mean, I've done that a few times. You're in or out. Yeah, I've walked in before. Vibe wasn't there. Didn't feel it. Fuck it. See ya. Mm-hmm. And I'd leave, but then I'd come back. So it was a long time ago, man, that I ended up, Louis, I was getting ready to do a meet. And I came in the gym, and some shit happened. And I was like, fuck this, dude. These guys are just taking too long. I'm not fucking waiting on them. I got shit to do. And I... Grab my bag and I left. Well, Lou goes down and call, tells Tom, I don't know what the fuck's going on at the gym today. Guys are missing this and this and that. And then Tony fucking Ramos just grabs his bag and fucking leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, and so Tom calls me and says, hey, man, Lou's on the war path of fucking that you walked out. I was like, it'd be all right. But I, uh, he, he, <laughs> that's his answer. <laughs> and he didn't, you know, he, but he didn't understand as I came back in Saturday morning. Yeah, and, and got it and, in. And took my weight. Mm. And then you know, and and like I always told Lou, he's like, well, you know what, well, you know, you you should have done this yesterday. And I said, well, fucking yesterday wasn't the day. Today's the day, mm-hmm. you know. And then Lou respected that. And it's funny because Lou put a piece, a couple pieces of equipment in a gym a long time ago, 
because I used to train at Westside and do all my major exercises there, mm -hmm. and then I'd go to Lifetime Fitness <laughs> and do, like, all my accessory work. Yeah. And that used to piss Lou off. So he got this – so he was a – you know, he found out I, I was using this hack squat. The hack machine. squat machine, he yeah. Bought, he bought the hack squat machine. <laughs> he bought something else. And there was a couple pieces of equipment that he found out that I was using over there. And he was like, well, I'll just put them in the gym. And Tony's got no excuse to leave. <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> I still like Still find an excuse. I, I still went to fucking Lifetime Fitness because yeah. they had a pool and they yeah. had a sauna. And <laughs> they had all the shit that I wanted to do. And the view was a lot better than at Westside. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah right. You know? That's funny. I actually wore this sweatshirt today. Uh, this was one, I think, before you could buy sweatshirts at Westside. Because when I first started going up there with Tim and those guys, I don't think you could really buy a Westside shirt. And Louis threw me this right when I was getting ready to take the first 700 because it didn't even have the fucking print on the front. It's only on the back and down the sleeves. Right. And I, I've kept this all these years because I've never only seen, like, when I first moved here, I ran into some guys here and there before I knew you guys that had West Side shirts, but I don't think they were selling them then. Yeah, I, think I don't you had even, to, I, I think even, you had to earn that shit back in the day. Yeah, I wouldn't even know. Like, so I still have, uh, I still have West Side shirts with the 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 date on them. Oh, really? Yeah. So he used to put the date, the year, mm. Um, mm. the year on them. That's cool. That's cool. But I've never yeah, seen those. I've, I've got a couple of those that are hanging downstairs in my That's shit. Sick. But yeah, but I mean, it's it's so funny, man, because like uh, when I went to West Side, I didn't pay attention to many things. Yeah. I just went there to lift, and like Gritter was, I mean, I was night crew. Yeah. And Gritter was not. He's so fucking mean when I first went. Yeah, I mean he, and, and the thing of it is, is that it's like, he was just doing what he was supposed to do. He was ex doing exactly what he was supposed to. Yeah. Do. I mean, and he was a smaller guy too. So then I was like, oh, there's another guy. It's kind of he's a fucking bulldog. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I never forget, I was trying to leave one time. And I was trying to leave, and he's like, comes out the door, where the fuck do you think you're going? We got deadlifts. And I was like, okay. And I come back in. He's like, where's your briefs? I was like, I don't have any. What is that? Yeah. And he's like, uh, he's like, here, gives me these Karen briefs. And I put them on backwards. <laughs> and I forget who it was. But they're like, hey, man, this is all backwards. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I go back in. I fucking, you know, whatever. And then, you know. Everybody got to start somewhere, well, Tony. <laughs> so what's funny is, so so think about that. So, I, so when I first started going to West Side, I'd go to the bathroom and put my briefs on. Because I'd be like, ah, you know, I'm fucking yeah. whatever. And then you fast forward all them years. I didn't give a fuck if it was a woman, a girl. I didn't give a shit who was in there. I'm dropping my shit and putting my shit on yeah, right yeah. there in the middle of the gym. And it was so weird. Like, the prog like I thought about that one day, like, the progression of how things happened there. You know, and, and West Side was like, uh, um, it's crazy, man. Like, there's, you know, I, I mean, I told you a story about the squat, I, the squat suit when, I, when my gun fell out and no, but if you want to share that one, go ahead. <laughs> so the, the people used to come. <laughs> so people used to come to the Arnold every year. Yeah. And uh, watch a squat. So it was like a week before the Arnold. So there's like 40 people in there. That's and the I, one thing that Louis would never tell people usually when there's going to be a gang of motherfuckers. I went and pulled one session when there was a, a shitload of people in there. You just walk in and you got an audience, which is fucking awesome. Right. So all these people would come in, but they'd all stand to the side. So we were doing speed squats. And, man, I was really strong, man. And, uh, um, fucking, we were doing speed squats. Well, I had, I was moving at the time. But it was like, I, I did have guns and whatever. And every once in a while, I'd probably carry a gun. It'd be, it, was not, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> but I had my squat suit, and it's rolled up in my bag. And there's all these people there. My bag's sitting right in the back wall against that monolith. So yeah. I take my fucking squat suit out, and I go like this. Oh, God. <laughs> and my fucking, my Glock goes like this and hits the ground. <laughs> Dude. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I forget who said it, man. I forget who told me. But I was so calm about it. I just fucking set my squat suit down, walked over, grabbed it, took the clip out, checked the chamber. Put it in my bag, put my squat suit in. <laughs> but it's so funny because when I went and picked the gun up and I picked it up and I looked at everybody, every motherfucker was like this. <laughs> <laughs> they, they wouldn't even look at me, man. And it was so funny because it, it, it's funny because I, I mean, I was so, it, it was, 
I hid my embarrassment so well yeah. that it looked like I was just a cool motherfucker. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, shit, you know? And, and I'm probably lucky Lou didn't see that because he pro- it probably would have upset him because, you know, those people, I, he might have thought it was cool because, you know, Lou didn't give a fuck. But, I mean. Strength coaches, the, all these people were in Yeah, I mean, there were. There, I mean, there were Pro be, teams. I, I, yeah, there was, a, you know, there was just, like, I mean. Compared to Westside, they're just normal people that go to gyms and think, oh, my God, it's the greatest gym. They this probably don't motherfucker's think, they don't think, got me, a gun. A good spot for my gun is let me roll it in my squat suit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah why does he have a gun in there? <laughs> what is going on at this place? And that was the shit that happened there, man. It was just like crazy. And it was just, it just happened. Yeah. I mean, stuff would happen there all the time. I never forget this, man. So George's son came in one time. And, and Gage, was, he's awesome. But it was when we used to have a phone in the gym. And we're all fucking in the gym working out. And I think Laura's there and some other people. But Gage calls 911 oh on, on the phone at the, at the gym. All fucking around? Yeah, he on just accident. calls 911. Yeah. And he just fucking maybe hangs the phone up. Well, fucking police show up. And the police, as soon as the police come through the door, Louie goes to Laura and somebody else. Tell tell Tony go out the other side. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was coming and for I, you. And, yeah, you thought it was coming for me, and I was like, I ain't got any warrants right now. Bro. <laughs> yeah. it, it was so funny though, man. It was, but that's how the gym was. Yeah. I mean, and, and what's really cool, man, is like, I got to fucking lift with some really really fucking cool people, man. I mean, I you know I got to lift with you know Mike Rosario, fucking um, Chuck Vogelpool. You know, all them old school guys, you know, fucking Greg Panora, dude. I mean, I mean, Greg Panora was a bad motherfucker, too. And, and, and you know, AJ and, and all these guys that I came up with. And then, you know, you got a new group of guys that came in that, that were fairly strong and would come in and bench with us on Sundays. And, you know, I, I mean, I got I was blessed to see greatness. Yep. I mean, I got to fucking see it like, like daily. I mean, it was like <laughs> I literally, I literally got to see greatness and stand right next to it. And it's so funny because here's what's f- fucking hilarious. My normal was was outrageously crazy to everybody else. Yeah. So when I see somebody do something, <laughs> I'm gonna give you an analogy on this. Okay. When I see dudes, <laughs> when I see guys. Big dudes do shit in the gym, and they're like, "Oh my God, did you see that fucking crazy that was?" I'm like, "Well, it wasn't fucking that crazy. I mean, fucking <laughs> way crazier shit than that." Yeah, it's just like the clubs and the girls I used to hang out with, shit like that. I go to a regular bar, and two girls start kissing, and the whole bar is like, "What the fuck?" And I'm like, "Yeah, what?" Yeah, I saw that on Tuesday. Yeah, I, yeah that, was, <laughs> that was that was that was my last weekend. But, yeah, yeah. It, but it's so funny because that's what your normal yeah. becomes, and that stuff doesn't fucking like. It doesn't scare you. And that's why Westside, I think that's why Westside did really well at meets. Mm-hmm. And George will say this. He said, you know, uh, Tom Waddle used to talk shit to somebody and George would say, man. And he would, he said, dude, he's like, and, and George used to train with Tom. He said, dude, if you could deal with Tom Waddle's shit talking in yeah. the gym, nothing at a meet could bother you. Yep. And he was like, man, it was just, and it was, and Tom's not a bad dude. He just wants what's best for Westside. And, you know, he, he's, you know what I'm saying? And, but at the same time, he's going to talk shit and he's going to fucking run his mouth. And just like me, I talk shit and I, mm-hmm. you know, say shit to people. But all the time it would be, and then you go to a meet and shit would go and you'd be like, this ain't nothing. Yeah. You see guys act this, this way in the fucking back room, and they're all, bah, you know, this and that. Like, my first powerlifting meet, I thought, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. But then, yeah. Na- but you fast forward two years later, that, that shit doesn't phase me. Nah, I mean, that's know, why I take pride in, like, our Wednesdays are so intense here. Then we go to the meets. We have to bring up the intensity to even get the same out of the guys. Right. Because you was – your group – was going to be the strongest guys there going against each, they're going against each other just like they were in the gym. There wasn't really a lot of guys challenging you guys. Some of the big iron dudes there for a little while, but the reality is like that's the same how we've been lately, where the most competition is actually here. Right. Then when they go to the meets, they're just taking the fucking spots. And so if they're they're used to that environment, that's why the other day we had low attendance on a Wednesday. <laughs> we'll call it that. <laughs> I was fucking furious. I said less guys show up today. We ain't even gonna have enough for a spot. What kind of fucking? What the fuck is going on? It was like, a couple guys row, a couple guys this. It was like one of those type of oh, deals. Oh, they had COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> the, there was a couple. There was some COVID going around. Right. No. <laughs> but the reality is, and that's, that's really never happened. 
And that was the first time. And I was like, ooh, I don't fucking like this because – once again, it's accountability. You're there in the int- in the fucking mentality of that Wednesday has to be fucking great because then we go to the meets, it ain't fucking nothing, bro. It right. ain't nothing. Well, yeah, because you go there and you're just like, oh, well, you see this guy warm up. You see this guy do this. You see that. And what's like, crazy. Like, I got seven guys in my group stronger than that. Like, you know I, what I mean? Like, it. I have to thank Phil Harrington for squatting. Yep. Because I went to the WPO meet. And I'm sitting fucking right here, and I'm looking to my left, and he's squatting. Everybody's talking about how bad Phil Harrington is. I looked at his legs, and I was like, I could fucking do that. Yeah. Phil's another one that looked like more like our build. You right. know, somebody you were like, man, that dude squats 905 or yes. whatever it is. Yeah. I'm like, what Phil the was fuck? fucking strong as shit, yeah. dude, you know? And But, you know, and he's also, <laughs> I love Phil to death, but, I mean, goddamn, dude, he was fucking crazy, man. I remember one time I let him drive my Escalade, and I used to have this Escalade with spree wells on it. Of course you did. And we were driving it to uh, this car. What was your line of work then? Car, car <laughs> <hunting>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in pharmaceutical. Poured a lot of concrete, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I was in pharmaceutical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just so, taking them doctors out to lunch. <laughs> right. So he's driving down the road, and we're going down Morris Road. This motherfucker stops at a light. He's hanging out the window. He's screaming at these girls. He's trying to give them his phone number. Oh, my and God. And I'm like, Phil. Do you see what you're driving? Yeah. It's fucking – and he's just, he just doesn't give a shit, man. I mean, it was just so crazy, man. And, like, he's one – He's it's so funny to, like, like one minute he'd be off the fucking chain and then the next minute he would just be – you'd put him in a situation and then he'd be totally cool and calm. Yeah. And I'm like, bro – I'm like, this You're is, calling dudes yeah. crazy. That's usually. Yeah. I mean, but here's what's fucking, here's what's great about it. I fucking love the circus. Yeah. You know? It's, it, it, it's like, Phil's, Phil, Phil's one of those dudes, man, I used to always tell him all the time, man, I got my nickels worth out of you, you know, because you throw yeah. the fucking nickel in and the monkey starts banging the things together. Yeah. That's what you could do to fucking Phil every time. All you had to do was make a comment to him and he'd fucking fly off the rails. I mean, I used to go to meets and. I'd walk in the warm-up room, and he'd be back there. I'd be like, oh, my God, everybody. Phil Harrington is here today. <laughs> so blessed to see Phil. And he'd be like, shut up, man. <laughs> but then if you didn't say nothing, he's fucking off the wall talking to everybody, yeah, screaming yeah. and yelling, man. It's, it's just funny, man. So good. Um, all right, we, we got time for maybe statement or question. We'll yeah. wrap it up. I know you got some. This is yeah, amazing. No, no. So Tony's helped me out and helped – me, Treadway, all the all, of us. all the bench guys out. Yep. So, Tony, for the listeners, what's like the one tip you would give to someone for bench and potentially squat and deadlift? Yep, that's good. Um, for the bench press, I I, I fuck man, get your arm strong. Yeah, I, I mean, knew I, you were gonna go there. Yeah, I mean, just get your arm strong. A lot of people don't realize that triceps are. Like, yeah, in the upper back is the main. That's what yeah, George like, always I, preach. I, yeah, so I, I mean, I guess I, I'll tell, I'll tell you like this. Like, the, I, I learned something really late in my career of powerlifting because of Joe Jester. Yeah, he taught me something that I, I didn't do. I had strong arms. I mean, I fucking, I mean, I've locked out 900 pounds in a pin press. I had really strong arms, but I would get to this point and I'd fucking, you know. But I learned something from Joe, and Joe would do this thing when he does speed bench. He doesn't do this and drop it and go. He goes like this, here, and then press. And it's got that little small pause. Mm. And, that dude, I got so strong from that. That is the one point. Like, get your arms strong and then learn that one little just – and then go. Because what happens is, is if you fucking just speed and just fly through it, you know, you're missing some fucking firing pattern. You know what I'm saying? You need that. Um, squatting. You always talk about those heavy unracks. Yeah, I would, I would, I would fucking, I would, I would do, I'd work up to as much weight as you could standing up. And I would say about five or six inches and just stand up with the weight and hold it as much as you can. Because I've stood up with 1,200 pounds before. I got a video of it. <laughs> And 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 I stood up and hold, I could hold 1,200 pounds on my back. So I mean that was a great thing for me because then I get under 800 pounds. I'm Ain't like a fucking thing. I'm like what the, the shit. fuck <laughs> for this? Deloaded 400 pounds. Yeah. So <laughs> you you do so you learn stuff like that. So nervous system shit really. Yeah. And and I mean, I I the fucking deadlift man. I mean really is uh. I I here's the best thing I could tell you about the deadlift. 
I would watch videos of guys on YouTube and try to figure out what if, watch what somebody else does that you connect with yeah. that you feel like oh I can do that cuz I tell I tell people this all the time and this is what people don't this is one thing that the uh the psychology of sports and all that stuff and and I I'm not a psychologist or nothing but I've seen it happen so it's got to be fucking true people said that you could never do a backflip on a dirt bike fucking Kerry Hart tries it and then people go holy shit it could be done and a year and a half later, dudes are doing double backflips. Yeah, it's like the four-minute mile. Yes. It's like people saying, oh, you can't, that can't be done. But you have one guy that breaks through, and he breaks through the mind barrier to mm-hmm. do it. Just like telling a guy, you know, you'll never be, you know, no guy's ever going to bench 700 pounds or 1,000 pounds. You know, we're told our whole lives, no. Mm. See, when you're a little kid, you think about this. You, if you have a nine-year-old kid and you go to a store and you tell them no, I promise you this, that motherfucker is the best lawyer in the world to try to win his case against you. Yeah. And he's going to do everything he can and everything in his power to do it. But we we as human beings have beat people down to tell them, no, this can't be done. So what you need to do is see somebody do it, say, that dude's built like me, and you see it happen, you immediately go like that because that's what happened with Phil. Yeah. I remember – I remember that, and I was like, holy shit, I could do – I mean, think about that. I mean, I trained by myself. After neck surgery, you know, um, a, a neck fusion, and I 10 months later, I totaled 1,800. I had 179 pounds. Shouldn't be that way. Mm-hmm. You know, but I totally saw what <laughs> Phil did, and I could totally connect with what he did, and I got as strong as he did that and quickly. push you. Yes, and that's what, you know, people have to understand, and – you know, find somebody and watch somebody do something. Because that's the problem. People see guys something. I, perfect example. We, I used to do this with guys in concrete all the time. Mm-hmm. We'd fucking go over and we'd have something. And there, we used to carry these, uh, we used to have these blocks. But they would only weigh like 15, 20 pounds. And we'd fucking go over and I'd be like, oh, oh fucking God, man. You know? <laughs> and then you would see these guys go over there. And, and may, they probably weighed 50 pounds or something. Yeah. But you'd see these guys go over there, and it would fucking, and they would like get themselves all set up and everything, and then all of a sudden, it's just they believe that it weighed that much. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's the biggest problem. Mental barrier. Yeah. People say, "Oh, I can't do that. I can't do this," and that's it's a mental barrier. And I think that, honestly, with any kind of weightlifting, is if you see it, you can believe you can do it, then you can go fucking do it. Fuck yeah, Danny. That kind of, like, leads into what I was going to say with, like, the going back to the gamer mentality thing. Is like, how do you or can you even teach that to, like, the younger generation or anybody? Like, what's a tip that you would give to, to people? Um, I used to tell people all the time, don't quit on yourself. Mm. You know, it's that's got really nothing to do with anybody else. Just don't don't quit on yourself. You know, I, I that's, that's that was me. I, I didn't quit on myself. I just didn't. I mean that's how I that's how I thought that's that was my thought process, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll tell you this, um, a lot a lot of uh, weightlifting and stuff like that, and my my success at Westside probably had a lot to do with when I started doing it. Man, I was a really good athlete in high school. I mean, I was a really good athlete. Now I was small, undersized, but I mean, I was a fucking badass athlete. But I would only play the sports, you know. I mean, I started varsity my freshman year, you know, and I was a kickoff <laughs> returner. And that's what I fucking did. But dudes would be like, what? Well, you know, but I'd fuck play three games because my dad didn't show up. Mm. So he he never showed up. So I'd be like, fuck it. I quit. That was the one thing I did with weightlifting. I told myself all the time, don't quit on this. Don't quit on yourself. Don't fucking quit on this because you'll fucking, you'll regret it. Mm. And I regret like quitting sports and stuff in high school and things like that. So just don't quit on yourself, man. You got to find... You got to find it. Listen, if it's not something you want to do competitively, then get the fuck out of it. Go work out somewhere else and go do something else. But if, if you want to do it competitively, then then do it. But, you know, that that's why I tell people, because, you know, you get these guys who are half in and half out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that half in and half out shit, man. Ain't going to work. It don't yeah. work. <laughs> it, it'll fucking it'll run a crew real quick and it'll run everything that you guys got going and what you got mm-hmm. going on you know it's just like you know i mean that's that's what i could say man is that just don't quit on yourself that's, that's good, good advice sure. trevon 
Um, I don't mean I don't have a question. It's just awesome to fucking listen to. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, th- I said it could be question or statement. <laughs> yeah. So that's a statement. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, Tony. So first off, appreciate your friendship. I'm not sure why you helped me out back in the day, but, I, but I'm glad you did because I'm paying somehow, it forward. Somehow you ended up being my powerlifting coach <laughs> well, well, <laughs> along all this. It's pay it forward, Corey. And <laughs> yeah. what do you do? Yeah. Well, I think we also had. It was interesting because Tony was still working at Columbus Distributing when I met him. Yeah. He didn't have his own business yet. Right. And he worked on the side a little bit with, with obviously, construction stuff. But, like, I think we started having this, like, he was hollering at me on some of the business stuff. Yeah, the I t-shirts. was hollering him on, yeah, that's right, T-shirts, and I was hollering him on lifting. We kind of started our relationship really like that. And then it was, like, over the last however many years it's been now – you know, he's one of the, the short list of guys I can call for anything, which has been amazing. And so I appreciate that, bro. It, it's been yeah, Well, it's I been appreciate great. it too, man, because he answers the phone call for me. You got a guy running, a, you know, back when it was, you know, the other company. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you're answering the phone for me. And you got fucking a million people calling you, and I can call this guy up, and he fucking answers on the second ring. And I'm like, wow, man, this is fucking really cool, and it's impressive, and he's always done me right. And Listen, I tell everybody this, man. I I watch this motherfucker dude stand on his morals more than anybody I know, than any person I fucking know. Most men I know that have been in Corey's position and things that he's went through, would have tucked and fucking ran and fucking hit away and fucking just fucking blocked everybody out. And this motherfucker stood tall in the face of adversity and said, fuck all of you motherfuckers. Watch what I do. And look what's what's coming next. Right. (laughs) So, I mean. Appreciate that, Tony. Yeah, dude. I have the utmost respect for you, dude. Business, friendship, everything, brother. brother. Well, we want to do another episode just talking about your business. We couldn't get to that today. Right. But I think now having this, you know, newest episode about all the lifting stuff and we'll talk about multi million dollar business, right. the things you built next time you come on the show. Maybe we'll okay. get some cigars for that one. Right. But I, I think I can speak for all of us. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, we appreciate great. it. Thank so, you guys for having me. Yeah, I appreciate man. it. All right, round table podcast, your boy Corey G, Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speed in the graphing gangster himself, Cole Susak, Tony fucking Ramos. Thank you. <laughs>